Osteosclerosis, brought to you by Leading Sheep and the Livestock Biosecurity Network. My name is Sarah Jane Wilson and I'm the Regional Manager for LBN in Northern Australia. Leptospirosis, caused by the bacteria Leptospira, can affect almost all mammals. There are over 200 strains of lepto around the world, but what we commonly see in Australia infecting livestock are two strains called Lepto Harjo and Lepto Pomona. Infected animals can carry the bacteria for long periods without showing any clinical signs. The bacteria colonise in the kidneys and the animals then shed them in urine at birth or abortion and therefore contaminate the environment. Many infected animals don't display any signs of clinical illness and these apparently healthy carrier animals are the main source of infection for other animals as well as for humans. The disease can spread from animals to humans a few ways, including via broken skin, such as in cuts and abrasions, handling aborted fetuses and afterbirth, or assisting during calving without gloves, poor hygiene practices, or not washing hands properly after contact with livestock, indirectly via infected soil or water, or urine from infected stock reaching humans' eyes, mouth, or nasal passage. The bacteria can live for a long time in fresh water, damp soil, vegetation and mud, but they are very quickly killed on dry soil or by sunlight. Flooding after heavy rainfall can spread the bacteria to previously uninfected farms. Outbreak of lepto infections are therefore more common in the wet years and even in closed herds you may sometimes see infections of lepto as water from other properties can be spread through um, organisms in flood. The clinical signs in cattle, to some extent, will depend on the strain of lepto that they are infected with. Both leptopomona and leptoharjo can cause late-term abortion in cattle. Red water, or blood in the urine, in cows, and particularly in calves, suggests strong infection with leptopomona. Often there is a sudden onset of the clinical signs, which include red water, lethargy, anemia, and sometimes jaundice. Sudden death in young stock can also occur. Not all severely affected animals will die, however, and the symptoms of red water may pass after a few days. Leptospiral infections can also cause mastitis and decrease milk production and reduce fertility. It can also be responsible for losses in body condition as a result of the persistent kidney damage that's caused. Lepto is considered rare in sheep and goats, but honestly hasn't been investigated as intensively as it has in cattle. One is because this is a clinical disease, the clinical disease in sheep is not as major a problem as in cattle. And secondly, because sheep are considered to be of less of a zoonotic risk through their husbandry practices. Leptoharjo can also be transmitted between sheep from infected cattle. So that can be stock in close contact in the right environment. Um, but sheep can also maintain the disease within the flock and sheep will often be asymptomatic. So we won't know that any of the sheep are actually infected. Leptopomona in sheep can cause abortion, perinatal death, renal or kidney disease, and anemia and jaundice as well. Being a zoonotic disease or a disease that can affect humans, vaccination is the best prevention strategy. And that also includes purchasing pre-vaccinated animals if they're available. There are a number of vaccination preparations available. These include combined products, um, such as your seven-in-ones that include lepto and clostridial diseases or um, a straight lepto preparation. Lepto is definitely more prevalent in conditions where it's going to be wet and cool. So the best way to prevent these is to prevent movement of infected animals into or among herds and flocks. Properties that are trading cattle, sheep or goats are more at risk, when, especially when they're in conjunction with a breeding herd in contact with wildlife reservoirs, such as feral pigs, if there's a previous history of lepto in the herd or flock, um, access to wet areas, and also in warmer climates, such as in dairy areas around Queensland. Farm workers and vets handling animals shedding the bacteria are also at higher risk. If you have any questions about lepto, please contact me at sjwilson at lbn.org.au. And I'm also providing some other resources on vaccination from MLA, Making More From Sheep and Future Beef.
thank you for listening to this webinar on leptospirosis. If you have any questions, please contact us. Thank you.